how many of these inverters can you have? This um, sensor that senses power that you're using can only handle 10 at the most. So that's 650 watts each, so 6.5 kilowatts, right? But how would you hook them up? Now, as far as the hookup goes, it's a little bit more complicated and it's actually very important to do them right. Each one can produce uh, 650 watts, 700 watts. That would be about 6 amps, maybe 7 amps. It would be safe, let's say 7 amps, right? So that means that if you put these on one line, so you have to have a separate fuse in the fuse box for not necessarily each of them, but if you have a 15 amp fuse, then you could put two of these on that fuse safely. Why? The fuse is trying to protect the wire that is carrying the power inside the house and the wire is rated for either 10, 15, 20 amps or whatever. So when you have two of them pushing each one seven, amps then you have to have a wire and a fuse that can handle 15 amps safely because when you have a high surge then these will push 1400 watts uh, in my case i have these two on line one and this one on line two for those people that are wondering right now well how do you distribute the power in between them right because each line in the panel like the split phase has a separate consumption it's very very interesting but the meter doesn't care about that. I'm gonna explain that to you in, on a piece of paper, but briefly how it works. If you have more power on one line and less power on the other, these don't know which one necessarily has more if you only have one meter. And initially I thought I had to separate them. So I have to produce only as much power as I can on one side and only as much power as I need on the other side. So therefore I don't mix and match the two, but actually you can. The meter is not, it's a smart meter, but it's a little bit dumb. So it's, it's a good dumb, good for you. What happens is that it doesn't care if you're pushing a little bit of energy on one line because your neighbor basically uses it. It doesn't care if you're getting more power than you're producing on the other line. It adds everything up and it looks at the sum total. But to be more clear, I will explain this on a piece of paper. So this involves a little bit of a magic at the end. So there's some stuff that I cannot necessarily explain, but I'll try to do my best. So you have your meter box, right? And then you have your, your uh, three lines coming in. Neutral, L1, L2, right? And then they are going into your meter box, into your fuse box. And they go into your fuse box and each one corresponds to a bus bar with a neutral in the middle. So we have neutral, oops, uh, this one goes over there. But I don't know if this eraser works. No, it doesn't work. But anyways, you get what I'm doing right now, right? L1, neutral, L2. Right? And then I have my grid tie inverter, 650 watts. They are hooked up. One is hooked up to this line, right? And the other one is hooked up to this line. What happens is that the lines in between the in the house are never completely balanced. Never, never completely balanced. Let's say that you have 300 watts of, of power getting pulled out of the network on that line and you have 100 watts getting pulled out of the network on this line, right? So the inverters, you could separate them. You could put this inverter with a CD clamp only to read this line and this inverter only to read this line. So what happens is that you'll make this one produce 300 and this one 100 and you satisfy uh, any power going in and out of the meter, right? So that was my idea initially because I always have more consumption on line one than line two. The, the loads are not balanced in the house. I thought I will have to go this route. This is where the magical part starts to come in. This uh, inverters, if you hook them up to one sensor that uh, reads everything, you could tell the sensor to divide by two, right? So total divided by two and send the information to this meter. So each one produces 200 watts to match the 100 and 300 load, right? So I have a 400 load and then it gets split in between two and then each one produces 200 watts. But at that point, for those people that actually understand how things work, you're thinking, well, if, if you're producing 200 watts over here, right? And you only need 100, don't you push 100 watts into the network? And here, you're only producing 200, so don't you have 100 watts leakage 
right? Because they're not necessarily matching. And I thought I will have to overcomplicate the system when I had a CD clamps and I had everything that I needed, separate the lines, everything was in line with everything that I needed to do, except I figure out that when I got a third one, right? This third one, I was thinking about putting it into the line one where I have more consumption than the line two, which is just basic routers and small things and lights and stuff like that. But if I hook them up all three to one meter, one sensor shared among all the lines, right? Even though I am pushing power with them in the network through line two, and I'm using 100 watts through line one, somehow here in the meter, it doesn't care. So this meter has two arrows, which shows you in, in, in which direction power goes. So if power goes that way, that means that um, you're using, and if uh, arrow goes that way, you, that means that you're pushing power in the network. But when I hook them up this way, even though this line is it's pulling 100 watts, right? Because we are pulling out of the network 100 watts. This one is pushing 100 watts, right? So this one is pushing, this one is pulling 100 watts. The sensor inside is just a simple sensor that does the math in between these two and sees it as a zero. But the meter is not smart enough for that. It's a smart meter. It knows which direction power goes, but as a sum total not as a how much it goes on each line. So the lines are not separated inside the meter. So the, the lines are basically crossed like this. I don't know what kind of a magic happens over here, but even if I have them hooked up like this, even though I am pushing some power through one of the lines, it literally goes into the transformer. I am getting power through the other line as a credit and therefore this one still counts it as zero. And I know that because I have data from it and I could see my power bill, which is $23 a month. So it's basically zero usage, except 1850 is my monthly uh, subscription and uh, the remaining of the power is actually leakage. So this leakage initially I thought the, the difference in between, which is about 0 0.7 kilowatts a day. I thought that this leakage is because the lines are not separated, but even if I've separated them, it didn't make a difference. Where this leakage comes from, it's actually very, very simple. There is time between the sensor on the line sends the command to the inverter to go up. So this one has to sense there is load on the line and then that power needs to be produced. If power gets produced, then the power gets pushed and then you're not using it from the network. But for a millisecond, every time something turns on and off and on and off and on and off and on and off and on and off, you have a little bit of a time delay. And that is the leakage that I have going on through the network and I could see it. For those people that will ask right now, after I scribbled everything on this paper, well, why not install two meters and separate these two on one meter and then keep this one on the other meter because obviously you have less consumption on this line than this line over here. And I could do that, but there's a huge disadvantage if I will do that. Because if I have a microwave over here, let's say I have a microwave that uses 1800 watts on this line, but it only comes on for two minutes at a time, then this one line will require 1800. The sensor will tell this one produce maximum 650, 1800 is not gonna help very much because these will just sit in standby because the microwave is not hooked up to this line and these will just sit in standby and not produce anything. And the same way if the microwave, it's on this side. So let's say I have a 1800 watts microwave, then these will be able to produce 1300. So I'm only pulling 500 out of the network, right? But I have this 500 in this inverter on this line that I could literally match my entire microwave, but I can't because it's on a different line. But when you have them all hooked up to the one sensor, as long as the meter is dumb enough, then you are fine. So this is a smart meter that is dumb enough 
to be able to give me credit for whatever is going through the network. The power company doesn't lose anything because the power that I'm pushing back in is going into the transformer, somebody else on the street is using it. So nobody's losing anything over here. Also, this power is safe power because these have sensors. So if the power gets cut out over here and the meter loses the power, then these get cut out. So no power gets pushed to the lineman if they have to work on the line. And the power that gets pushed, 100 watts, it's already on an energized line, so it's not jeopardizing anything. And my neighbor is using it while I'm getting credit for the line when it's coming in through this little magic over here in the meter. It's very, very interesting how the system works, but it definitely works. Now, one way to compensate for this would have been if I would have got 220 volt inverter, right? But if I get a 220 volt inverter, which initially I wanted to get a 220 volt, these are 110 volt, because they, they run on 110 between these two lines, right? There's 110 between these two, but between these two, 220. So if I would've got an inverter that it's between the two lines, 220, it, the same thing would have happened because I have more consumption on one side, less consumption on the other side, but the meter doesn't care because this will produce 220 volts. Push them just through these lines, not 100 watts over here and 300 watts over here. It will literally just push power that way and somehow it will be recredited through the, uh, the meter and everything works fine. So why I've started with a 110 volt system is because initially I thought that a 220 volt will create problems uh, with the power usage because I have different loads on each line. But it turns out that it's not a problem. So that's how the system works. It's actually easier than you think. So if you wanna build one of these, I already got a quarter of my money back. So I've, I've spent three grand with all the batteries and everything in, in here, and I got a, a quarter of my money back. But I could have made it a lot cheaper. And I've expended a little bit more than I wanted to because you had that obsession of catching every watt, but the most profitable is basically just having one. But I will explain that in the next video because uh, there is a way that you could get your money back really fast. It's just a matter of are you buying a toy or are you buying to get your money back? Because if you get want to get your money back, that is really the best way. So that's gonna be the next video. Thanks for watching. Stay subscribed to the channel.